Did you have anxiety or would you call it depression when you were a kid? I had both. I had, well, no, I was like, things started out great. Like it may have been hard for my older sisters. My parents hated each other, but I was like pretty much loving life as a kid. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest. I, I, I just, um, I was, had friends. I, you know, and then something just like, well, I was a bedwetter. So sleeping at friends' houses right. was not good except for my three best friends. Right. They were like twin twins and uh, another third. But even then, I do remember I wet my, I peed in my sleeping bag on Amy Martin's floor. And I just did not want her parents to get involved, you know? Mm -hmm. So I woke up a little early, but there was nothing I could do. And she knew I was a bedwetter. So I flipped the, <laughs> the um, sleeping bag. And then when she woke up, I go, I peed, but I peed up. You know, because like the circle was like up. So, I, so you don't have to tell your mom. Oh you my know. God. I just remembered that. That, uh... Peed up. I don't understand. I know, it's, it's not a very good you lie, but out, uh, amongst... Peed on it and then went back in? No, like I just like... Like it like shot I, up I, I was and, lying and so it, and it I, didn't I hit up. the rug at all or anything. Yeah, yeah. so you don't have yeah. to tell your mom because it's, I peed up. I like the circle, I made it so the circle was up. up. Yeah, yeah. I get it now. Okay. Uh, I loved it. I hope you had to explain it this thoroughly at that time to everybody. <laughs> you see the liquid, the urine went up, <laughs> not touching in contact with the floor or the rug. We all know that water or moisture never works its way down, so it stayed there for the evening. But I, I was a little bit happy-go-lucky, and then, like, depression hit me. When what, I age, was, what age? I was to, um, just about 13. Yeah. To, like, 16. Horrible. Mm. And then I was uh, better again right. for a while. Right. And this is the part the eternal question is, did you need that period of time to be creative? Did you need that? Um, I've had every therapist in the world say, no, you don't need that. You mm -hmm. didn't need it. No. And then there's some part of me that's always the, the, the self-inflicting part of me that's just thinking, no, you, you, that anxiety helped you or that depression helped you. And that's a bad, you know, that's a tricky thing to play with because uh, you don't want anyone thinking I need this because they don't need it. You but then there's part of you that thinks maybe I did need it. I don't know if that's just Catholics that do that. Or I do think that it's good thing to go. I'm the sum of all of my parts and all my experience have brought me to this place that I'm, is good. But I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I think it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, is like comics or like, uh, well, I don't want to get better because it, what if I'm not funny? Oh, but I'm not a good example of that because I'm not as funny as I used to be. I'm really not. <laughs> yeah. But um, you've been a little too happy. I, I think <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna go outside and smash your car with a baseball bat. No, I'd be fine with it because it's just <laughs> stuff. But um, ex exactly, yeah, I don't know. But uh, but I do think that, and also it is funny because I remember saying to my therapist once. I was single and I, and I go, uh, I mean, like, how am I going to find someone that's done this level of work on themselves? And he just like sat politely. And then I went, oh, most people don't need this level of work on themselves. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know. Have you been seeing the same person for a long time? This guy I've seen for a while, a while but um, I've seen different people. Like, I, I, I remember... Remember, do you remember? When um, I was your therapist? No, but uh, we have mutual friends that also went to the same therapist because I'd see them in the waiting room. But there was, but Pamela Connolly, hmm. who was on Saturday Night Live one year. I didn't even realize it when mm -hmm. I was seeing her. She's married to Billy Connolly. She was that British woman. She was a th shrink. Billy Connolly, the, the great uh, Scottish uh, comedian. Yeah. Yeah. And then she was like, I wrote a book about Billy. I want you to read it. And I was like. This is in your therapy session? Yeah, I was like, I don't want to read a book. 
I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, to be fair, you hadn't ever read a book before. She just I wanted mean, you to read one. Yeah, but it wasn't like about my. It wasn't like what I pay. It wasn't like a book, like a a Pema Chodron book. It was like she wrote a book about her celebrity husband. Like, why do I need to read that? Well, here's the thing. I think it's some people say when you're in therapy, and, and some therapists believe you're not supposed to know anything thing about the therapist right. and their life. So the person I talk to, I really know nothing about her life. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about it. And I just, because she has not revealed anything, I never say anything like, well, so I won't uh, have a good holiday and I hope you have a good time with your family, question mark. They were killed in a fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, to know that about me yeah. and what you just brought up. But then I've, but in the course of my years of trying different people and different methods, I've had other people that tell me everything. And yeah. that's kind of weird, you know? I think there's a happy medium, but that is true. Like when I was seeing this Pamela, I, um, I remember l- I loved her. And I remember saying to friends, like, I mean, she's like my best friend. I mean, I feel like she's like my best friend. And then like one session later, I, I asked her, do you have any kids? And she's like, I have five. And I was like, oh, I don't know her at all. I, I pay her and she's not my friend. I'm a, I don't, I'm a fucking ass. If she is, I'm an asshole. Right. I still think you can pay people and then they're still your friend. Like Sona, I've paid you to be my friend. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, that's why this whole podcast exists. So you could have friends that you don't, you don't pay. Okay. <laughs> That's a, you just said this whole podcast is a trick for me to finally get some friends that aren't in my employ. Right. Exactly. There have been times in the past where I've had, I mean, especially back in the late night days when I would have parties and look around and I employed everybody. Yeah. And I was having a really good time. And then I realized, oh, maybe they think they have to be here. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, no. We so. had a good, I mean, I'm kind of kidding. Nice, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I. I think you get close to the people you work with. Some people don't. Like some people just work with people and go home and then that's it. But you actually, because I think that you genuinely like the people you work with, right? Ooh. No. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry about I tried that. to say something sincere and it backfired horribly. You know what's so funny? I wanted to talk about this because people have all these preconceived notions about like New Hampshire, growing up in New Hampshire. Well, I just hold on. Can we just go back to Sona for one second? Oh, sure. When she said that you have to pay people to be your friends, and mm-hmm. that's what this podcast was, it got real silent. It, mm-hmm. did. it did. And I was going to fill that space, and I decided not to. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. <laughs> and now I can feel like her heart is beating faster because she has like a guilt pain. I'm sweating so much. Yeah. The, I am. I'm it, sweating. It's crazy. Uh, she's wearing this uh, light purple uh, sweater, and I can see it just vibrating with a heartbeat. Yeah, it makes me, it made me uncomfortable when I said that, thinking it was kind of a joke, but then no one laughed. So I'm like, oh, is that is that real? No, it was uncomfortable. I wouldn't and say she's sweating she's, and it's she's I'm shaking like Amy Klobuchar's bangs during a <laughs> presidential um, debate. Well, no, uh, it's okay. I mean, I welcome, I welcome truth here on 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 the podcast, and but it's maybe not true. you. She like, thought you we were all I mean, I just thought that that was like the whole con- like the whole conceit of this podcast. S- you said it. Sarah's getting twelve hundred dollars for being here today. Oh. I, I'm sure. You're, I mean, but just know, I mean, you're batting like six hundred. That's really high. You know, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I thought that that was what this whole podcast was about. But that's OK. It's well, fine. it sort of was, you know, kind of a jokey title. But then it became real in that I do like what is absolutely true is you're an exception, but there's a bunch of people because we've hung out and had real conversations. There are a bunch of people I really admire and and have loved for years. And I had quick connections with them on a late night show in front of an audience with a band. And I never really got to talk to them. And that this has been fantastic because I right. get to do that. Yeah. But you and I over the years have hung out I mean, I think it was I think it was the last time you did the podcast. Yeah, that was our like awesome bonding day. It was a really nice happening, which is we were in New York 
and I was taping at Earwolf Studios and you came over to do the podcast and then afterwards we're done. And it was just one of those things where I think it was winter time. I want to say it was mm -hmm. winter and it's kind of dark. And you said, yeah, okay, well, and I said, so what do you, what do you do now? And you said, well, I got to go. Um, were you doing the comedy cellar? No, it was like Gotham and oh, we Gotham. were right near Gotham. And right. I, so I go, I have to be basically here in three hours. So I'm just going to like walk around. And you were like, you want to get something to eat? Yeah. And then um, you're never supposed to reveal that you have nothing on your schedule. That's Why? like rule number one of being powerful. Oh, <laughs> no, is that true? No, I, <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm kind of kidding. But I, kidding. I basically said, I've got nothing to do. Let's hang out together. And I said it just in that tone of voice. <laughs> That's um, weird. Yeah. And then, uh, but we ended up walking around. We went to some. Gray dog. Yeah. What was that? It was. There's it, like three of them. So yeah, yeah, it's like a chain. And it was very informal, like order at the counter, sit down. <laughs> and then we were walking around and it was funny because people were acting like we were doing some kind of bit or something. We, we'd get stopped occasionally by people saying, Sarah, Conan, what's going on? Like, what are you shooting? No, we're just walking around. Right, like, because they don't see the cameras when you're, they're watching a bit on, on TV. So yes, they're probably exactly. like, oh, you're shooting a bit. It's like, no, we're just walking down the street. There'd just, be, you yeah. see like others we're around. Di we're digesting hot dogs right now, walking <laughs> around. But it was really fun. It was really nice. And between the podcast and then walking around afterwards, I thought, that's not a job, you know, in a nice way. You, oh. It's not, this is not a task I need to perform. This is just absolute fun. Was that and, the first time you two hung out, just the two of you as pals? I don't, I think. What was one on one, yeah, probably. I, yeah, probably one on one, yeah. Yeah, there was always some other around. Somebody. Harshing or mellow. Well, that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. It yeah. was nice. We were able to like complain to each other and stuff. Yes. You know, in a, I mean that. I should a, have been wearing a wire because then we could have released that as Conan walks with the podcast guest after the podcast, secretly records it and we release that. That's more content. Secretly. Oh my God. Yeah. It's kind of a dick move. Yeah. Yeah, total dick move. Did you go to it, the it, comedy it would be club? Called, it would be called Dick Move with Conan O'Brien. <laughs> oh my God, so good. <laughs> that is good. All right, that's it for uh, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. Coming up, Dick Move. <laughs> <laughs> I convinced Sarah Silverman that I just want to go to A Bon Pan <laughs> and get a double shot uh, almond milk latte. But really, I badmouth people in the business and get her to confess that she hates them too.